I pulled up in the Maybox. I love Maybox. I was yeah. always been a fan since I was broke. And it's oh. just like, it's beautiful. Yeah, man. I sat in one. They're and, great and, cars, man. I can imagine so. They're safe. <laughs> yeah. And they're very comfortable. And the other very, too. Remember, the uh, they're very expensive. Big Boys Big Neighborhood. Boy. Beautiful day in the neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I've been waiting on this one. And shout out to my daughter, Jade, who thinks that she's uh, Don Tolliver's booking agent. <laughs> Don Tolliver, welcome to the neighborhood, my brother. Yes, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Man, it is a pleasure to have you in the neighborhood, man. And I'm going to tell you, when I knew you were coming in, I was like, man, how do I dress? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, like, I'm telling you, man, I'll see you wear something or I'll see you at, like, uh, a festival. Mm -hmm. You dress better than a lot of people. Uh, I appreciate it. Is that intent? So it's got to be. I can't say it's that intentional, of course, because you're putting it on. Man. Is Is fashion important to you? I want to just say it's just fashion. I just like to, I like to, I like to, when I look good, I do better, I feel like. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So, look good, feel good. Yeah, it's just really just the basis. Like, look good, feel good. I always, I always put more oomph in whatever I'm doing when I feel like I got a cool fit on. So, yeah. that's always a part of it. Can me. you wear it twice? I definitely, I'm starting to learn. I'm a grown man. So, I'm starting to really learn how to really, like, you know, intertwine pieces that I really gotcha. like together. Like I used to be a thing where when I first got on, I was like, oh, I can't wear it. I don't, I don't do that anymore. Like if I really like something a lot, I might wear it a whole two or three days. Okay. Like I don't care. Like Okay, because we were asking, because we were care. all sizing you up when you came in. We were like, man, <laughs> wow. could I wear it? Cause I, was it was it Rolling Loud? It was an outfit oh, yeah. you had on that Rolling Loud. I'm yeah. like, man, I'm gonna go get this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm gonna go get this, man. <laughs> had you always been into music, bro? Was music, and I ask a lot of people, was it in your household, man? Because there's yes. a different sound for you when it comes to your talent yeah it's really it's really deep in the, the household my mom and my dad my dad was um uh he he made music he was he like recording himself he was um out recording you know making music he was uh he did songs with mm. um people from swisher house he's really yeah. close oh. friends with yes, the sir. ceo of swisher house shout out g dash and the whole team and uh, he did a couple records with those guys back in, the, in Houston. So he's really and what kind of genre though? Was he hip hop more? It, or? it was R he R and B for real. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. R and B. He's a singer. So you saw that around the house early. How do you go from hearing it in your household to knowing that this is something that you want to do? Um, it was one day where I just noticed that I had like a a voice. Like I noticed that I knew how to sing. It was like about how old? I don't remember. It was old enough for my dad to take me to the barber shop. I always think about this. Right, right. right I was old right, enough right. for him. He right. took me so to I had to be five, six, seven. You know. Yeah, he, yeah, somewhere around there, like probably like nine, ten or something. He took me to the barber shop, and I was listening to music. Soul Child. I kind of mm. forget what song. I think it was the Best Friend or Buddy or something mm -hmm. like that. And um, I was like humming it back, and I was like singing it. After I heard it in the in the barber shop, I was singing it for like two or three days straight, but. That's when I found out that I like I really can sing and like sound. I damn near sounded just like him at the moment. So when I had that voice, you know, young and did you did you did you write or do anything early on? Um. So I when I got into high school, um, I had I had tried to record myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I had a, bought a PlayStation and PlayStation. They used to have like. Uh, cameras that you can buy separately and it had a microphone on the camera and I would basically play a YouTube beat off the TV and have the PS3 on recording, you know, whatever I did off that microphone mm -hmm. with the beat at the same time. It was a very, very um, interesting setup. Yeah, but, makeshift studio. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very interesting but I end up like recording a song that I was able to go to the schoolhouse and everybody was singing it. It was a thing and it just kind of fueled me to just slowly. That was like your first piece of success, huh? Yeah, it really That's when was. That's you're like, oh, I'm on. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It was pretty cool. The, the whole school knew the song. It was cool for me. Had you ever been part of a group that that we know? Uh, not that we know, but have you ever been part of a group group situation? Not a group group situation. Me and one of my close friends, Young Josh ninety three. We um, we was like we was like rapping together for a while, and we just kind of figured that we needed to figure things out we need to like you know step back and really di get more diverse into mm. a actually what the game was but for a moment i was rapping with my best friend and making music with him and we just kind of like you know had to figure it out understand like you know what it was going to really take for mm. either one of us to go somewhere did you know this is what you wanted to do um 
I knew I was talented. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I just knew that I had a voice. I knew that I just wanted to be heard. Yeah. And that was really like the main thing for me. Hey man, with with your family too, did they did, did they see the talent? My mom, she was my mom shot at my mom. She um she was supportive with whatever I had. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? Whatever I was doing. She um I recorded like I think two like underground songs and played it for her for the first time and she loved it. She supported me. And that, that was a really big goal. Yeah, man. Like, and it's crazy when you hear it early on, too, though, from your parents. Because yeah. being a parent as well, man, it's and your, and your dad also doing music, it's different when you know what your kids are dealing with. Yeah. Like how unkind the business could be. Yeah. Everybody don't make it. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And even if you, you got two songs and your mom listened to it and she nodded like, oh, baby, that's good. Man, that's so much fuel into yeah. the tank, bro. It was. It was. It really pushed me way farther because I was, like, nervous to play it for her. She could have been like, man, if you don't go and go get a job man. or if you don't go and she, – she didn't do none of that. You know, she she supported me, and that took me, you know, to the top. Before you get into where we we know the name, before with the Don Tolliver and there's, you know, shows and festivals and, you know, record sales and accolades, man, there's times when, you know – there's no money coming in, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And you're doing it out of love, and everybody's telling you, you know, there's probably some people that's like, man, oh, you still doing that? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're still mm -hmm. doing that. What did you do beforehand? Like, were there any other jobs or anything like that, or you just knew that you were focused in on music? Um, I just, I, I, I'm 100% focused on the music. I had my own little hustle going on in the streets, and I just mm -hmm. focused in on music. I heard that. I, it was nothing else that I cared about but music, you know? And it was like, it wasn't. I wasn't even forcing it. It was just like I put, I put all my energy in just to go into the clubs at night. Like I really like, I really like, I really kind of just betted on myself to be mm -hmm. honest because I had a lot of like motion in the streets. Like I was really a hustler. I was doing my thing, but I had to go to the clubs every night. Nobody know how to you know how that works. Like people mm -hmm. calling me, I'm in the club. I can't yeah. I can't pull up on nobody. Right, yeah. Boys is mad. Like oh, oh, oh. I'm in the strip. After I go to a club, I'm going to a strip club. I might go to another strip club. This all this like, research. Yeah, all yeah. <laughs> all this research you gotta do. All this, you know, getting just getting my song spent in the club mm -hmm. is what I was trying to do. Hey Amen. And when you say like kind of hustling in the street, it's it it begins that thing where you almost can't do certain things because for for other people party, you got to be associated with they party. You can't go do anything, but you was like, nah, I gotta go do these clubs. Yeah, I, I gotta always, get. Yeah, I always had to like stay, stay in arm's reach <laughs> to 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 my to 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 the you know. Yeah. But um, it just got to a point where I just had to go. Like I just let it go. Like honestly, and and it all made sense. It all kind of worked out for me at the end of the day. Yeah. I bet it on myself crazy and just said. Forget it and just went to the clubs every night, got my song spent, went to the strip clubs every night, got my song spent. And I would go to like one club, like I was it was it was crazy. Sometimes I do like four or five different mm -hmm. clubs a day. Like one as soon as it opens, get it spent. One maybe when it closed, right, like one or two o'clock closing, trying to get that hot hour when everybody leaving out. Hey man, slide this while they leaving out. Yeah. Then I go to the strip club and we just going crazy. So you put the work in too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because now the people still working hard, but now you got the device. You know, now people are blowing up even a little bit more on social media. Yeah. But you went you went that route where people was like, no, nah, I got to get on turf. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I got to go really, really touch people. And that's something that, and no disrespect to how people get down today, but that's something that we didn't have, you know, back then, where you really went out and you and you touched and you, and you really made sure that you were paying tuition into the school of experience. And I think that's why we see how professional you are now oh, and you. how when you get on stage, bro, like, yeah, I think that there's people also when you go on stage that they probably don't want to go on right after you. Probably. Yeah, sure. I know. <laughs> yeah. I come with that. I just, I just come with that, that killer instinct energy, bro. That's just how I still come at it. Like I still come at the game. Like you know, I'm still hungry and like I have things to prove, which I feel like I have nothing to prove. Right. But in my head, like I'm not done. So every chance I get to like showcase my talent the best way I can, I'm trying to do so. Hey man, does, is it crazy how not being like how known? your music is, how known you are or your name, but even just the hustle of the things that we think are hit records now, do you ever think about, man, but when I was coming up and y'all missed this, 
You know what I'm saying? Like the catalog before you knew who Don Tolliver is, was. Oh, so basically asking me like if there was a record that I did that I might have thought was bigger than what the world thought. Yeah, not even bigger than what the world thought. It's just that like we could come on at a certain moment. Mm. But then there's, there's like people say, oh, man, Don Tolliver. Yeah, I like him. But we don't understand the people could say overnight. We don't understand mm. how long the night was. The, the night was <laughs> crazy. But then and then, too, like within the night, like I had a lot of like good moments yeah, too yeah you know that stuck so it's been a it's been a long process but then at the same time not so long right. too to be honest it's kind of weird but honestly it keeps me in this this weird little spot that i really love to be in you know it's mm -hmm. not like to me it's not here and it's not there it's like this gotcha gotcha and and, and that and that i love so much it, it keeps me hungry it keeps me motivated to try more and more Hey man, when you when you do get a chance to go into like a heaven or hell, and at that moment, it's like, where is that twenty twenty, and then the so, world shuts you down. Yeah, that was insane. <laughs> you know what I'm that saying? Was insane. It's like man, like okay, I'm in, I'm on, and then the whole world shuts down to something that we've never, you know, we had nothing to compare it to. Yeah, that was a, that was a crazy feeling. I'm not gonna lie, cause. I remember, like, I was in Houston, and we had, like, a release party for for the album. Then I flew to L.A. the next day, and it was, like, everything was shutting down. I just remember being on top of my friend's rooftop at his crib somewhere in West Hollywood just looking over the city, like. And I didn't know what to think of or what COVID-19 yeah, was about to happen. You know, yeah. this was literally the day, like, everything shut down when my album dropped. I didn't know what was going to happen, to be honest, but um, I had faith. I love the music a lot, mm -hmm. and I just knew, like, I got this far. This can't right. be, you know. And, yeah. I, and I was locked in with Travis, too. So <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day, it was like, you know, we're going to figure it out. Hey, man, and that's one of them things where, you know, you just want an album come. Yeah. You know, you're doing radio, you're doing video out hits, just everything. And at one moment when you're supposed to have this great momentum, like you say, it shuts down. Yeah. And when you bring up Travis and the whole Cactus Jack thing, how does that relationship, how does that start? How did it start? Yeah. Well, basically, just to sum it up, I was doing a lot of underground shows in the mm -hmm. city. I had, like, a couple of, like, managers that was kind of, you know, spreading word, helping me navigate through things. And um, one of one of my managers, um, he got a hold of one of Travis's close friends. Mm -hmm. And, you know... The person I was dealing with at the time, um, the manager I was dealing with at the time, he was very persistent. He was always very persistent. Like, shout out Cozy Kobe because at that moment, he was very, 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 very persistent, and he really, really went for it. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you know, um, Travis's team, they really, it was like, all right, let's 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 check it out. So his close, his close friend came and pulled up on me, checked out the show. Um, basically, I just locked in with him. He just got to know me gotcha. more, and he was able to bring it to Travis, and that was really it. Yeah, and there's a lot of a lot of talent in Houston, and yeah. there's also low hanging fruit too. You know what I'm saying? As far as like like why why you and why Travis? But he had you know anybody had to see the work. You got to see the talent. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And sometimes it's even harder to put on people from from home plate because they expect something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But he had to hear something that, you you know, I'm pretty sure that you know, I, he found I, an interest in. Yeah, you know, and then, too, I earned it. Yeah. I super, super. Didn't like, I think nothing. about it. I think, yeah, I, I earned it 100%, like, with everything I had to do. So that's one thing I tell people all the time when it comes to just trying to, like, have relationships with people in the music industry or do anything in, in, in the music industry First things first is you got to earn whatever you're trying yeah, to man. achieve. Like, it, it sometimes it's a, it, you get in a really bad situation when they give it to you and you don't know what to do with it, mm -hmm. you know? And Or also when uh when it, you get exposed that what you were selling was a representative, it wasn't a real you either. Yeah, you know, because yeah. that, 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 that kind of burns out as well, man. Yeah. Or now, do you feel like you record different as well? And I do ask that because when you get, like, hits or people start to know you, I always say you kind of get in your own way. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to not get in your own way and know, like, stop being in competition with yourself? Man, 
Mm, so I have I don't know, man. I struggle with a lot of things. Like I'm 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 stuck in my ways to a certain mm-hmm. extent, but I think my problem is is just like really not knowing. Sometimes I know when I got a great song. But really, it's just be, I be in my head a lot, right? So it's like sometimes I know I have a great song. Sometimes I don't. And it's just like I make so much music, too. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's like prime example with the Offset situation. You know, I know you know about it. Yeah. But that was like one of the prime examples of me just really not wanting to deal with something and it being so crazy. And it took so much for me to even say yes to the situation just because of I love Offset to death, though. That's Mm -hmm. brother. But when it comes to, like, music, I'm just very finicky about, like, some of the things I want to give to the people. And that was one of the things where I just didn't know. You know what I'm saying? What what, what, what made you hesitant? Were you hesitant in what you were delivering? Hesitant on the Offset project? Hesitant on, man, let me focus on me right now? Like... It was a little bit of I wanted to focus on me, but not only that, I just was hes- hesitant in, um, you know, my delivery. You know, I think Offset is amazing, mm-hmm. but I, I, I just wasn't feeling the delivery that I that I came with, and yeah, that's the face I get. Every yeah, time. <laughs> yeah, because you know what it is too, Don. It's like it's one of the things where it sounds genius now. You know what I'm saying? And you're like, man, you didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. But yeah. at some point, were you even thinking about, like, don't release it? Yeah. I told, oh, wow. I told Offset plenty of times I didn't want the song to come out. And he wasn't playing with me. He called me like, look, bro, this song coming out. Yeah, bro. And I was like, you know what? Let it rock. And look here, you know? Yeah. And, 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 and that was one of those with Offset, extremely talented. But that was one of those that brought a different feel to the album, it brought a different feel to radio, to the club, and everything, man. And here you are about to not fucking put it out. <laughs> fucking Don Tolliver over here, you guys. But now, you know, I, now when I really think about it, though, I understand what, why I, I can, I can get it on his album. When I look at his album as a whole, I can see why, like this song was a little bit different from everything else he had going on. Gotcha. It kind of had a little standout from what we were doing, so. I get it now. I understand, you know, when you look at everything as a whole. The body but, of music. Yeah, the body of music. But when it was going on and everything, it was just kind of hard for me to, like, really sit with that record. Could it have been your song? Nah. Right. Why? Nah. I just wanted to put it out. I would never. I had it. Dude, from what we get a chance to hear and what you probably did, you probably either stopped or vaulted a lot of hit records. 100%. Sometimes I just don't know. It just. Do you ever go back to something? Of course. Right. I always, like, I, I used to just make, 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 and just get over the old, but now it's like, keep building. You got a great record, you like it, build on it more and more and more until you you're, you you can't, you know? What do you do with the ones that you continue to build on when you say, if, if I have an album, this one doesn't make it? What do I do yeah. if it doesn't do make you, it? Do you just vault them or? Yeah, I vault, but I mean, it's a it's a great piece of, you know, sometimes it might work for something else that I feel like, you know. I never just put it away and, you know, right, that's never it. Go but, back. Yeah. but I have moments like sessions where me and my engineer just run through all the songs and be like, man, that was really great. What did we, what did, why did we, you know, we have moments like that all the time, so. And do you pull them out? Yeah, I do. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm starting to get back into my artist thing as well, man. That's so right. if there's any collaborations. That's right. Let's you know, go, you're an assist leader. Hey, Let's man, but go. for real, you one of them too, bro. If somebody get with you, you I can guarantee a success. Yeah. Like, and, and that's one of them things, man. And I don't know if, if you can guarantee a success, if, but I know that even in here, you could make a song with anyone in here and you are, you'll make it a hit record. Please. I can give you some. I give you something to work with for sure. No, I don't need nothing to work with. I need you to just give it to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like I don't like. It seems like you like work. I don't like work. I like you work. know. This is 30 years in radio for me, man. Mm. I'm trying to find that next thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I yeah, I got my son in basketball. I'm gonna be one of them dads. If he take off in basketball, I quit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's my it. daughter's extremely talented. Something pop off for her, bro. I'm gonna yeah. become one of them dads. You know what I'm same. saying? I'm the same way. So, so, and congratulations on your little one. Thank you. Is that congrats. your first? That's my first. Beautiful man. And, and and you know how you sit up and you say, "Oh man, your queen." You you know your queen is amazing. Every yeah. time she comes to the neighborhood, bro, Callie is always 
always beautiful. The one. Even when, you know, we tried to ask what was going on, you know, mm-hmm. she she held down, she held you down because we we knew something was popping beforehand. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was like, okay, no, we didn't. I just make it sound like we, <laughs> yeah. we didn't inve- make it sound like we didn't investigate the radio. He had a cold look. <laughs> but but, but no, nah, man, and I even asked her, I said, man, when y'all get together, I said, do he do you charge him for like a verse or any work? And she was like, she was like, no, I said, there's no invoices that go on. You know what I'm saying? But how is it, man, just being in the business and having your partner, your queen in the business as well? Um, it's cool, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, we're we're both blessed. I think yeah. that's the that's the 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 get the take home that I take with the whole situation is that we're just blessed. We're able to do whatever we need to do. We we're, were able to do whatever we need to do for our son. So mm-hmm. it's amazing. How old is the little one now? He's about four months oh, man. in the little chain. Hey, bro, and I'm telling you, man, like, I always tell people just as a parent, you've never, not with music, everything, man, your queen, you've never fallen in love with anything faster mm-hmm. than you fall in love with your child. And that's mm-hmm. from the beginning, the first hold, where you're like, man, I kill or be killed for you. Mm-hmm. How do you. How do you balance your time now with the demands of us wanting to see you mm-hmm. and being the dad as well? Well, you know, for one, I got help, but regardless yeah. of the help, um, it's it's tough at times. Like it's been, it was really tough to drop this album, you know, within the midst of me having my my son. It's and I, this is the early attentive times. Oh, um, oh my! Like it's it's been it's been crazy, but honestly, my girl has been one hundred percent there. She loves him beyond to death, and I just thank her so much for mm-hmm. being the mom that she is. It's incredible, you know what I'm saying? So I got help, and I thank God for that help because who knows, I might have not have been able to put this album out. But I wanted to get it done so I can spend that time right. that I really want to spend with my son. So it's a blessing, but, um, yeah, it's it's challenging at times, for real. But even, even with the album, bro, it's like, you want to put the album out, and then when you put the album out, now we all want to see you. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Man. So, so that's even challenging, even, even more so. And then you got to think the the queen, she got a great career too. 100%. You know what I'm saying? And, mm-hmm. and and people say, oh, you know, there's working parents, but there's a difference between working <laughs> parents that can come home kind of every day, mm-hmm. or a working parent that's either on plane, trains, automobiles, festivals. Even when people try to bring their kids and they wear the little headphones and everything, man, <laughs> it's just it's just a whole different world, bro. It is. Yeah. When's your birthday? June twelfth. June. Oh man, you just celebrated. Yeah, I just celebrated. What did my you birthday. do for your birthday? Um, uh, I spent time with my son for real. Yeah, I spent time with my son. And how young are you, if you don't mind my asking? I know I can um, Google I all this, 30. but I like I like conversations. I just turned thirty. Oh, thirty. So you did nothing for your dirty? What? Well, nah. You know what? That's wrong. You no, was in the a, best I, place, though. I did a lot. I did a lot of things. Um, I did. I did a lot of big boy things. I'm gonna tell you that. Mm. I did some big boy things. Like what? My, I mean, you know, but not like big boy like me. You didn't overeat or nothing like that. <laughs> no, you didn't, no, oh, no, you no. mean like I big just, boy like other sense of the yeah, word? Yeah, I did some things for the future. You bought something. I did some things for the future. So it was very, 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 very um, personal to me. Okay. And, and I just wanted to spend time with my son. I wonder what I really want to know what these big boy. Th- but when you said it was personal, it's personal. I don't want to. I don't want to. But don't leave from here and go to Charlemagne and tell him. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm, <laughs> All right. no, I'm not doing that. But but it was like grown thirty year old type of thing. Grown grown man. I heard that, bro. Come on. Did, but no party or nothing like that. Nah, we my girl. She had set up a couple of little things for me. We got on the boat. You know what I'm saying? Came home. And I was able to spend some time with my son. It was cool. I heard that, man. Yeah, my uh, my daughter really loves you, bro. Her birthday is in September. Oh, so tight. September 24th is her birthday. I already told her that you're going to do uh, her sweet 16. On a boat. Yeah, we're not on a boat. <laughs> unless you want us to get it on a boat. But yeah, I already told her. So check, check with the queen here. Check the date, please. Thank you. Talk to his manager. <laughs> and, yeah, and just see what we can do, man. September 24th, around that time. Right. You know, we got wiggle room. You know what I'm saying? Nah, where, I don't think I'm... I'm Ah, yeah, don't talk much. yourself into a show nah. for real. Yeah, hey, man, right. he going to leave out of here and be like, man, I don't know when he's serious or when he's playing around, man. Like, did I just talk myself into a show? Hey, man, let's talk about it, big boy. Yeah, as we should, man. I'm going to tell her that too, bro. But if you one of them dudes, man, like, and I know you probably don't feel, you know, oh, just compliments, but you're extremely talented. And we we get, we get are in a genre right now, man, where it feel like people are starting to pay attention to good music once again. 
And I think that you're one of those people that provide good music for us once again. Like I was telling Roddy Rich that was just in the neighborhood, man. At one point, music just started to get a little goofy. People wasn't caring about it. People was talking about how they just got in and, you know, and it was a lot. And no disrespect to Spotify or any streaming services. It's just that people didn't have this passion Mm -hmm. that it seemed like we're kind of weeding out now, bro. Mm -hmm. But you grew up in this and there was always this passion Mm -hmm. to to be a creator and be creative for you. Yeah. I tell people all the time, like, um, when I first was going to the, like, studios to record some of, like, those early records before I got on and everything, I... It was solely, I never really thought about the money. Like, right. I never, it was like one moment where I was literally in the booth recording a song and I was like, dang, this could really get me out of here. You know, if I continue and I, I just wanted to be heard. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I tell people this, I just want, you just don't want to be heard. Like, don't think about the bread, don't think about the car, think right. about the house, don't It'll think come. about nothing. That will come. What you need to focus on is just being heard by the right people and make sure you sound good. Right. After when that, come. when you come, after that, you're an artist. When you have our attention, make sure it's right. You're an artist. Did you ever want to, like, you know, because the music business, and not just coming from Texas, not coming, there's a lot of talent, yeah. but there's a lot of people that want to be in this business too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Did you ever feel like you didn't want it? Like, it, like, you know how you almost have, like, man, I think I'm on, and then you're not on. You know, you have you have a little attention. Did you ever think like, man, maybe this isn't it? Nah, wow. after I locked in with Travis, it was over. But even with Travis, man, Travis is still, and we look at Travis today too. You know what I'm saying? Like Travis today is like, oh man, that's genius. But when you and Travis start really kind of grinding and getting in too, Travis is still working on being Travis. Yeah. You know and what I'm saying? I still knew I was going. <laughs> right, right, okay. I swear I knew I was going. It was just like... Man, I I worked so hard just to be heard. You know, Flame came and mm. put me on his album, and we went crazy there. And it's just like I knew I was on some. It's like the 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 mental of cool. You felt it. Like like I seen an interview where Pharrell was like, "You can't teach cool. Like that is so real. Like I just everything from the ground up. I always mm. wanted it to be this crazy storyline." To meet all my favorite or to do songs with Cuddy and to do songs with Travis and to do songs M. with Kanye and to do songs with Eminem and to do songs with all these other great artists and to still be here to tell my story. Yeah, man. I just knew I was going to do it. I just knew, like, I would have an opportunity. Opportunity would somehow present itself because people liked the music that I was coming with. They liked it, what they would hear, mm-hmm. you know? And all I wanted to do is to be heard. So it, it kind of started just... You know what I love about it too, though, bro, is like we could say Travis Scott all day, right? Mm-hmm. But in your introduction, I wouldn't introduce you as Travis Scott, Cactus Jack, artist. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it's just Don Tolliver. Yes. And it, and it doesn't feel like you, you know, and, and love to Travis and the beautiful relationship, mm-hmm. but it didn't feel like you were thrown in or ushered in or you just got. All these, uh, mm-hmm. oh, that's Travis guys, so we got to like them. No, nah, I earned it. Yeah, man, in a in a major way. You know, so just imagine just the, the combination of you earning something and being next to somebody like that. You, it's, and you knew it too, huh? 100%. Travis like, I'm going over here. You're like, oh, we're going over there. You know 100%, what I'm saying? 100%. Now, what about now when, when you on and you see other people that that's in a position that want to be where you are? You know what I'm saying? Like, are you still working on Don Tolliver, or are you starting to look at other people as well? Um, I'm I'm definitely starting. To, I started my own uh, record label. It's called Hearthstone Records and Tapes, mm-hmm. and I'm like records high, and tapes, records I and love tapes, that. Hearthstone, <laughs> Hearthstone Records and Tapes, and um, I'm highlighting Houston. I, I found my first uh, artist, keeping it really low because I think he's like you know, a, Hearthstone is a diamond in the rough. You know mm. what I'm saying, and he's one of those guys. So I'm really just, we're cooking, we're cooking, we're cooking. I'm getting everything prepared and just making sure he's ready for what's to come. But I've definitely deviled my hands into some things in Houston. You know, mm-hmm. I really always try to highlight Houston talent. Really? Every t- yeah. Every time I have an album, I always try to in in input something, you know what I'm saying, from Houston in uh, in the mix. Hey, man, with Swiss Your House being such a, a, a backbone and a blueprint for for Houston, bro. Mm-hmm. How important was that for you to kind of stay with, with 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 a certain sound as well, man, that's that still paid like homage to to the city. 
it's very important to, you know, Houston is just like sometimes it's just the uh, we have so much charisma and energy and we're so proud of where we come mm-hmm. from. Um, it's just hard for me not to 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 bring that with me and to bring that energy. I think we're the coolest, you know, so it's like why not showcase that to the world and I try to keep it with me throughout everything I do. Yeah. What happens with you for the summer though? Like summer's here, man. What what's the summer plan? Oh, I gotta go overseas. I got in July. I'm have like a bunch of festivals overseas, so I'm just. Do like, you enjoy that? Like I festival? Love it. I love it. Like, what does that feel like when you walk out on stage and there's tens of thousands of people? Um, if they lit, we lit. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> hey, man, it, I forget, the, and you can Google it for me real quick. But it's this Travis Scott documentary that I've watched many a time. And you probably had the same experience, man, where Travis is performing and it's like probably 10 people in the audience, 14 people. Mm -hmm. And he's giving it to him like it's 14,000. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then you'll see the fast forward and you'll see what Travis Scott does at at a at a at a festival. Yeah. Do you remember the smaller stages and coming on at two, three thirty or something like that? Yeah, like in Houston, I did a lot of a lot of underground shows with you know my friend. I told you we was in a duo. We did a lot of underground shows, and it was about ten to five, seven people in there staring at us. There's a couple turning up in the front, but right. we was definitely going full throttle. And there's probably videos out there for sure of that. But um, yeah, I did I dealt with that a lot. Are you in a position now where you feel like you live in these moments? And these moments are leading up to bigger and greater moments. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of moments. It's so many moments I get emotional sometimes because it's like, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't be one this type of stuff to, it's just crazy, you know, like, you know, we all one day, nothing is really promised, you know, and anything can happen. And so these beautiful moments that I do get to have and I do get to like live in, sometimes I don't want to come out of them, you know, Mm -hmm. sometimes I want it to be forever. So um, I'm definitely blessed and fortunate and, you know, just steady moving with the time. What do you do outside of performing or music or anything? Um, If you just get a day or what do you enjoy? What do I enjoy if I get a day? I, I love, I, I, so I'm into cars and motorcycles. Mm. I'm into that a lot. Like if I get a, it's a good day to chill, like I go over the inventory, I look at the bikes, I look up, look at the cars, I, you I say like inventory? Inventory. Inventory of yours, or is there a store called inventory? It's mine. How many motorcycles do you have? I have four bikes, but that's not the 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 do all tell all. I'm really <laughs> like a car guy, but I ride my bike all the time. You know, it's very much so a part. But I'm I I was born a car guy. Really? Though? So yeah. What's your cars? That's too many, but I love See, them all. I'm, you I'm know what I got for the summer right now? I got me a '78 Coupe de Ville. Ooh, for the summer. Finished. I went and got me a 50 Merc for the summer. What I, you got for the summer? The 48? 48? Man. 48 what? Uh, Tilemaster. Okay. Oof. Okay. Yes. Hey, man, you got you a 50? Did you put hands in? Nah, yeah, everything is all clean. It's beyond clean. I'm going to throw an LS in there. Three. Do you get time with that, though? What do you mean? Or are you going to make time with it? Whenever I got to go do anything, I might have pulled up today in the Merc if I had time. <laughs> all right, all right, if I... Yeah. Like I'm just that type of guy. Hey man, had you always been a car guy? That, and then when you get on, you like, oh yeah, I can get it's it now. Over with. Yeah. And do, do you have your cars at the crib? Um, I have. Oh, a, you have a warehouse. Yeah. Yeah, Hearthstone warehouse, the clubhouse. Damn. Damn, everything is over there. You guys are like a, a smooth little compound, huh? Come on. You know where my Cadillac is at? Where's that? In his driveway, covered up. <laughs> <laughs> no, my my caddy right now, man. It's a. Uh, it's at the shop. And I leave it there because I just I just got it sprayed again. But yeah, man, like I love it, bro. And and early on, you know, of course your bread wasn't right. So when I got yeah. on, and I always was a Cadillac man. Mm-hmm. Always was a Cadillac man. I love it. And now, bro, wait till you see this one I'm about to put out on the streets right now. Come on, you gotta send me a yeah. Great so, so, what, what do you mean? I'm gonna pull up we ride into my daughter's party in it. Yeah. Together. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, like man. that energy. So if if you go and grab one, which one you grabbing if you roll out today? A Cadillac? Yeah, no, any, any. So is it the- oh, if I was going to roll out today, uh, I pulled up in the Maybox. I love Maybox. I yeah. was always been a fan since I was broke. And it's oh. just like, it's beautiful. Yeah, man, I sat in one. They're of the, great uh, cars, man. I can imagine so. They're safe yeah. and they're very comfortable. And the other very, too. Remember, the uh, they're very expensive. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Yeah, remember? We, hey, man, to each his hey own. Hey, man, we went to go look at this this car. And they had the, were you there when they had the, the Maybach there? And we didn't know how to open it or get out? Oh, yeah. yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's some things I'm still aspiring to. Right. But I was in that one, boy, and I was like, all right, how do, you, uh, how do you get out of this one? You know what I'm yeah. saying? But, hey, I'll get there. You know what I'm saying? I'm over here talking about 78 Cadillacs. My man over here talking about Maybach. <laughs> I mean, I'm in the old schools, too. Though. Right, right, right. Uh, Did you pull up in the map? Is it here today? It's here today. Yeah, we'll roll out together. Did you eat yet? No, I didn't. Yeah, but let's go to eat. Let's go eat, yeah, man. Come on, you know boy, what I'm saying? Let's do it. I'll pay for it. Come on. Oh, did you find it? You'll pay for it? Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, I, this dude, that's that Southern hospitality, yeah, man. You need some of that money you got right over some of them hundreds. Hey, man, let me tell you, bro. You no, no. take some of that money right there, we're going to have to bail you out with real money. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you try to spend that shit, bro. It, it, it'll be, uh, you know, Don Tolliver arrested in LA. Uh, and then I got to be here, and you know me, Brent, man. You know, I got no. kids. I'm turning state's evidence. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to be the main one in there. And, yeah, and people call it sucking shit, but I'll testify <laughs> against you. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, people are like, man, you got to hold down. I'm like, man, I'm not 10 toes, but I put four of them down. Oh, my you know? God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But no, man, it's a pleasure to have you in the neighborhood, bro. And I'm mm -hmm. telling you, man, we've been trying to put this together for a little bit. And like I said, man, you're extremely talented. I can't wait to see what else is going on with you, man. Mm -hmm. And and I really just wanted to sit down and holler at you. No, nah, you know I what I'm appreciate saying? You. I feel like it's a, been a long time coming for this. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I man. I appreciate you. Yeah, you want to break my outfit that I'm wearing or what happened? I like there? it. The black thermal with the black is cozy. The big boy dog tag chain is OD. Really, though? That's okay. nice. Oh, thank you, brother. Yeah, thank man. you, man. That's nice. Man, yeah, man. I did this, uh, you know, this right here. This is the Pro 5, man. I get them by the dozen from downtown yeah, LA. Yeah, that's true. true. You know, I get that. Uh, this right here, man, this is Chris Air, African jeweler. True. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you, Chris Air. Thank you for that, man. True. This huh. right here, this is a um, the iWatch. Yeah. Got little Futuristic. scratches on it, man. Yeah, I had it in my pocket when I washed it and dried it. Oh. So, But it stayed together, man. Got some little scratches on there. Nice. You know what I'm saying? And Futuristic. I'm wearing some free uh, Pumas that they sent to me. You know what I'm saying? We, but my, we love the free stuff. Yeah, my wife and kids, oh, they're immaculate, though. Oh, yeah. Me, I wear the promo shit. Yeah, you me too. <laughs> yeah. If I get down to promo, no problem. Come on now. Come on. Come on. I'm getting down. Yeah. It's a Nike. What this is a Nike. Nike right here, man. Yeah, man. What? Yeah. yeah, that's probably some uh, Travis Scott Nike deal shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> hey, man, can I tell you a story about Travis Scott, bro? Tell, tell Let me tell you, man. Trav is my guy, and I love Trav. These damn shoes. If you don't get these shoes or any of Travis Scott, any of that Cactus Jack, if you don't get it from the jump, you get this aftermarket. Mm. Now, for some reason, my kids don't understand. Get in the queue. Get in the queue. And get the stuff when it's regular price. Mm -hmm. So they, when Travis, it was a pair of shoes that he dropped, and everybody got them. So I, it was ridiculous prices. Mm -hmm. So I hit Trav up. I hit Trav. I said Trav, and this is this is Christmas of twenty one, probably something like that. Mm -hmm. I hit Trav. I'm like Trav, man. I said my kids are looking for these shoes. I said, if you got a Nike buyer that I could just buy the shoes or whatever, because I already went to the aftermarket. I couldn't find them. Mm. And Trav, you know Trav, big, you know, what's the size of so on and so forth. So he said, I'm going to have somebody bring them to you. Mm. I'm winning. This is my kids. I, Man, I look like Superman, right? Mm. So he calls me back, and he was like, big, I got some bad news. The shoes that your kids want, I only got them in your daughter's size, right? Mm. So I'm like, all right, man. Before I do this, let, let, let me pause the story because there's a text that come with it, all mm. right? So I'm going through my phone now. So I hit up Trav, and I tell him, I say, you know, can you bring the shoes? He's like, big, I got you, I got you. And so then he sends me the shoes, but he calls me. He's like, hey, big, he said, I have, a, you know, some bad news. He said, I was able to find the size in your daughter, but I wasn't able to find the shoes in your son's size. Mm. So I'm like, damn, they both wanted them, so on and so forth. So then he hits me up, and he said, but I did something special for your son. So I get the shoes, and when I get the shoes, I don't, I'm not a shoe guy. So I hit my shoe guy, and I'm like, man, I said, well, Travis, you know, sent me these shoes right here. You know, I don't know what kind of shoes they are. Immediately, he comes back. He said, do you want to sell them? And I'm like, no. Nah. I said, man, these are for my kids for, for Christmas. I'm not selling mm -hmm. my kids' shoes. So I hit another one of my guys, and I'm like, hey, man, do you know what these, these shoes are, these Cactus Jack, whatever? And he says, do you want to sell them? <laughs> So I'm like, no, nah, man, they're for my kids. You know what I'm saying? So 
when I go and I get them. got you right. Dude, let me, man, there is an offer that I have in here. Somebody offered me $22,000 thousand dollars for those shoes they man. probably go for they probably go more for uh more than that now now yeah man but i sold them for 15 no, I'm just <laughs> no. but twenty two thousand huh? dollars size 10 and a half man wow. yeah and i just you know we held on to them i told my son though i said you know you can't put your foot in those mm. you can't <laughs> open up this like my daughter she can wear hers i even told my son i said i'm just gonna find you these shoes these other shoes mm. We we'll, we'll go buy those, but these right smart, here, man. these right here, smart. You know, you know, no. Nah, this is this is if yeah. if Daddy lose everything, this is this is, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is Daddy going to the casino with this shit right here. You know what I'm saying? But I called Trav because now my son is of age and he want to drive and he want to buy a car. I called Trav out of respect. I said, Trav, my son never put these shoes on. I said, dude, we getting twenty two and twenty five thousand dollar offers. I said, Trav, I said, can I sell these shoes? Trav was like. Nah, bro, you nah, can't sell them. Bro. And then he was like, man, he said, well, how much does the car cost? And I was like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I was like, what are you saying? You know what I'm saying? Wow. And then I I go in and F it off, though, Don. I'm like, man, I'm like, man, we get him the cars. And he was like, no, he said, man, I got to get him some rims or something. And I'm like, no, nah, man, I got it. So then when we got off the phone, I was like, man, I probably fucked off this dude buying us a car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But but yeah, man, do do you get those kind of gifts too from him? Um, for one Christmas, I had, Travis had gave me the purple ones, and I still got them to this day. Did you put your foot in it? I wore them. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, you're more well off than we are too, yeah. though. Man. Yeah, you know what I'm man, saying. They That's still the selling. Hey, man, yeah, because my guy, my guy hit me up. He said, "Do we have the purple ones?" I was like, "I don't." And I googled the purple ones. Let me tell you, man. And I don't know if you're, you're like this with your friends and family, right? But friends and family sometimes, you know. You got it. Oh, you know, this is doing bad. Mm-hmm. Can I get a thousand dollars? Can I, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. My car though, my you know, and, and you're the guy. Right. And I'm pretty sure sometimes you do that. Right. I wish that if I had Travis Scott's situation that I could just say, here, man, take these fucking shoes. Right. And then they just sell them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. And don't come back. Because I'm gonna tell you straight up, man. If he hit me off with them purples, man, it's up. And what size do you wear? He gave them to me like I wear a ten. See, that's a general size. My son, his shoes are ten point five, ten and a half. Mm, okay. Them things sell like hotcakes, bro. Mm-hmm. Hot cake. They sell like hotcakes. Fuck it. They sell like French toast. Everything. <laughs> uh-huh. You know what they I'm do. saying? They do. What are those purple ones worth today? I don't know. I feel like when my foot done been in them and everything, I'm probably a hundred thousand something. Man, I was gonna say because I was going I was about to offer you seven hundred right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, crazy. man. Hey, man. I had um. I had uh, Thug on with me, and he mm. gave me a spider jacket. Mm. And right, you know, hey, 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 slime, here you go, slime. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hand me the jacket. Immediately when we get off the air, when I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm messing around. I'm saying, man, I'm going to sell it. Immediately, this dude from Germany hit me up and said it was like eight or $9,000. And I was like, if they doing eight or 9000 mm. You know, so all I do now, man, is I pick up memorabilia. Yeah. From everybody. And I always tell them, like, man, I'm going to open up this, you know, this museum. But really, it's not. It's like when I'm done with radio, I'm selling all y'all shit. Yeah. Fashion museum. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and and what is this T-shirt that you're wearing on top of the Nike thing? The T-shirt? Yeah. This is an SUC. Vest, the vest, the vest. It's a, a screw, the vest. screwed up click. What about the vest? What about the vest? Yeah. The vest is a Hearthstone 101. Oh, that's your shit. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, oh, that's yours, man. Yeah. Hearthstone, one of is that? Oh, man. What are you doing with that? Present it to me. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna come back with a vest for you. Actually, do you ride? Do you ride bikes? No, nah, man. But I look real good in the pictures, though. <laughs> let me let me tell you why, though. I don't ride, man. I don't ride. Tell them, Don. Don, let me tell you. I don't ski and I don't ride. Right. But I know how to do the attire, mm. nice. and I have a three uh, three wheel. Vespa scooter. Okay. You know the one with the two wheels in the front? Right. Man, I've had that thing for no joke, like nine years. Mm. I don't have 500 miles on it. Okay. The only miles I have on it from when I did this charity ride, uh-huh. and I had it on a flatbed to that. And I did a charity <laughs> ride for the Nation of Islam. What's going on, Minister Tony? Yeah. Parked it. Yeah, I, I can't do the motorcycles, man. No. But, yeah, but you know what? If you want to present me with a vest. I'll take it. At some point, I'll sell. But <laughs> at some point, I'll sell yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But this one right here, this one right here that you're wearing, uh, yeah. the value is what I'm really looking for. Yeah. The, as, as far as the memorabilia, 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you no, know, no, like, just the, uh, the the sentimental value. Sentimental. I mean, okay. The sentimental okay. value, the sentiment. man. You'll be a real one, man. It's my 30 year anniversary. What? If you took that off and handed it to me right now, 30 years in radio. Then I can have my pray. I mean, my people, my praiser. I mean, my uh, <laughs> my assistant put it up for me. The guys would be mad. I can't do it. Which guys? The it's a club, right? Yeah. It's a bike club. Oh man, you worried about the homies? You gotta be a, wow. you gotta man, be, you gotta be a prospect. For hey, a time. You, you gotta be a homies. real prospect. You gotta be a prospect, man. You gotta be a real around. prospect, fool. Damn. President can't just give you that jacket. <laughs> can't do it. You're the president. One hundred percent. Damn, I'm the president of my company too, man. <laughs> it's a different code, huh? Yeah. Maybe we make it work. Nah, we out of bounds, man. I, I'll i take the other one that you send in to. Oh, my God. But just make sure you bring it up. We get it on video. <laughs> you know? Hey, hey man, oh, Don, I'm like, man, I'm out of here. No. Don, thank oh, you for coming into the neighborhood, bro. Now I'm going to hold you to the uh, to the vest presentation. I got you. All right, I appreciate nice. you, man, and God bless you, man. Thank you for coming into the neighborhood. Don Tolliver in the neighborhood, big boy neighborhood. <laughs>